Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome to the side of the road. I am out today because I'm looking for what I used to assume was a summer plant but is in fact a spring plant and that is dandelion. Now I remember as a kid growing up we were always playing with dandelions, all kinds of games, both with the flower as well as with the seeds. And I also remember that my mom absolutely hated them. They were like the bane of her existence and she spent a good portion of her time in the garden working hard to try to remove dandelions. Well, I now understand that dandelions actually have incredible medicinal power as well as natural color that they are willing to share. So today I'm going to go foraging along roadsides and in parks and places where dandelions are growing a little more freely and hopefully nobody's going to mind if I am plucking a few. I'm going to be taking the flowers, the leaves, and I brought a tool, my mom's tool, hopefully to be able to also grab some roots. Each holds color, different kinds of color. Flowers and leaves are a little bit more giving of their color and the roots a little tougher. So let's see what we can find today in the way of natural color using one person's weed and another person's treasure in the form of dandelion. So I am literally standing on the roadside here underneath some pretty significant power lines, not too far from my neighborhood, but I just got in my car and kind of puttered around until I could find a place where I could very easily look for dandelion. So I brought a forging basket, my trusty shears, and some gloves, as well as this tool that my mom swore by. She called it the weed cruncher. And what it does is it'll go into the ground so that I can try to grab it by the roots and pull up some roots as well. So I see a nice thicket across the way. I can zoom in. Don't know if you'll be able to see it from here. We'll go walk over there and we'll see if we can collect some in the bucket. They really are like a freeway flower, but man, I've come to understand now the power that they have in the herbal world. I really have taken them for granted and grew up thinking they were nothing but a noxious weed, but they have some real healing power and some beautiful color. I'm just gonna take you walking with me for a little bit. I'm walking over towards this thicket blanket of yellow. So I'm going to harvest some from here on this hillside and try to see if I can get some roots here as well too. We'll see if my mom's weed cruncher works here. So we'll walk back over and <laughs> get my tool. It's funny because I always feel a little bit like somebody's going to come up and be like, what are you doing? Why are you taking those dandelions? Even though they walk past them all the time. But, you know, I can feel pretty good about the fact that I'm going to be foraging in an ethical way and that these really are seen here, I believe, more as a weed than as a medicinal plant and natural color resource. Got my tool. Got my basket. Oh, okay. Take our these things and hike back over here and take some plants. Wow. Lots of them. These are some big single tufts. I think if I can get in there and can get it by the root, I'll be able to pull up all of the leaves and flowers and maybe roots. So I think I might start with that process. I've never done this. It's kind of fun. So 
Wow, that just came up incredibly well. And my tool definitely got the leaves and some flowers. There's the root base that I got. I've got some of them, hopefully. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more. I'll try it again. But this is a great way to get the whole group together. So efficient. It's nice just to lay here. I'm not a huge fan of grass, actually. <laughs> but if it's someone else's pellet grass, and for some reason it's not that wet, which is awesome. And the sky is absolutely beautiful. We have these big puffy clouds today. And it has been one of the first sunny days in a very long time. So check out the sky above me. So there were three games I remember with dandelions when I was growing up. One is that you would pick the flower and you would go underneath somebody's chin. And it meant something if you saw a yellow underneath their chin, I don't remember. And then I remember a really horrible game we used to play and that is finding the biggest flower heads. And we would take them and we'd go, mama had a baby and his head popped off. So let me know if you used to do that when you were a kid. I'm sure that's dating me significantly. Then of course, one of the funnest things is always blowing the dandelion seeds. I see a few seeds around here, but I think it's still a little too early. This is, I believe, the beginning of dandelion season in spring. Really did surprise me when my friend Harmony O'Laughlin of Flores Feast Botanicals told me that spring is dandelion season. She's a fantastic herbalist. As soon as she mentioned that it was springtime, I started seeing dandelions everywhere. And I'm like, I swear that was a summertime activity as a kid. But just lying here in this grass and it's sunny and the birds are chirping, it really does bring back sort of carefree memories of being a kid. And the amount of time I used to spend outside just roaming around in fields and forests and how much fun we used to have doing that and coming up with silly games like Mama had a baby and its head popped off. All right, then I filled my foraging basket, and you can see I barely scratched the surface here along this little bit of a hillside. There's a ton up on top. I might do a second round from a different area so that I have enough to be able to test out all three. The head, which is obviously, should be giving me yellow, I think, and the leaves, which may give me a yellow green and then some roots. And roots are supposed to give a kind of reddish color. So I do know that it does take a little bit more to be able to get the color from roots. I tried last year and it didn't really work. I got some color, but it was not much. And I think it's just because I didn't give it the respect and time that it deserved. I know that from working with natural color, we have to let the plant lead us instead of us trying to lead the plant. And I think last year with the dandelion, I didn't focus enough on it. I didn't actually believe it was gonna work and it didn't really work. It gave me a color, but let's see if something different turns out this year now that I know a little bit more, not much, and we'll happily share what I find with you.
here's my basket filled with my dandelion bounty. As I was walking back to my car, I found some really, really big dandelion heads. And so I cut those off, just the heads themselves. They were huge as compared to the other ones that I pulled from the full plant. So I decided to take some of those heads. Now I'm gonna separate the heads from the leaves here. They may make a different color. I think they will, but we'll see. And then as well, I'm going to pull and keep some of these roots. I did get, I think a few pieces, we'll see. Maybe I can make a small pot and see what happens. I will try to remove as much of this as possible for no particular reason. Maybe just looking to get the most out of the yellow. I don't know that that's necessary at all, but I figured, why not? Try to make it as simply yellow as possible. Last year I did something similar with Rudbeckia or Black Eyed Susans and I separated them out and I actually got considerably different dye colors from the flowers as from the leaves and centers. So I rinsed off the dirt and from that grouping that I took, I got only about this much root. So there's still quite a bit of root left in the ground. I'm gonna soak them and just let them sit for a few days. We'll see what happens, see if anything starts to come out in terms of color and then we'll heat them. We'll see what the roots bring. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. Let's check it out. Ah, uh, the backyard, maybe natural dyer. I decided to put my seedlings out to get a dose of sun because today we have sun. And what I think I'm gonna do then is start off my dandelions as a sun tea. All right, so this is my harvest. They've been sitting overnight outside in the cool, but of course they're gonna close up and not be quite as big, but it's enough to get a solar dye or sun tea effect. I'm gonna do just a quick rinse, just in case there's a little bit of dirt on them. I'm not that worried about that, to be honest with you. But just do that, capturing the water that I'm using, trying to be more aware of water conservation. So I captured it in a dye pot and I'll use that. Strain out the bits, but I'll use it in another dye. Just picked this mason jar. I'm gonna go ahead and put these dandelion heads in. And fill that with water, super simple. And since we have such a beautiful sunny day, then why not, you know? I could definitely go out and collect more heads, but I'm not going to at this stage. There we go. I will fill that up with tap water. 
and set that out in the sun, get it going that way, you may end up putting it into the pot. It's not a lot, but we'll spread them out so they have some room in there and see what our friend the sun is going to do with those. Looks like a little yellow is already coming. Hanging out with the Hopi sunflower seeds and a bunch of pine cones <laughs> and all of this year's seedlings. All right, have some fun in the sun, my friends. We'll check on you. We'll go work on the leaves. We have a lot more leaves than flower heads, which makes sense. Do not have a jar big enough. I do, but it's actually busy doing some other things for me. <laughs> so I think we'll use the pot for this one. We'll rinse this off and we'll actually get that steeping on the stove top. Now I'll just strain this water, some of the bits. There's a lot of from pot to pot in this house, that's for sure. And we'll use that water to put them back in, put them on the stove. Add a little bit more. We got a pretty decent volume there. Let's check on the roots. They've been sitting overnight. Getting soft. Color. It's really pretty, actually. This is going to be a fun one to see what happens. Maybe I'll even put them out in the sun in a jar today the sun do a little work on them soften them up see if they want to share some color with us nothing yet I am going to do this on a super low heat and just let it really really gently simmer. No sun today. So I brought these in. Now I'm going to go ahead and put them into my dye pot. You can see a little bit of yellow down here. So hopefully we'll get some yellow dye out of this. And here are the roots. They're coming along, looking pretty soft. Might start heating those up as well too. And the greens are looking pretty good too. Just with the soak and cool down overnight. I will strain off the leaves now and heat that up and then we'll be ready to start putting our fiber in. Alright, I have my three dyes, dandelion dyes. I have the root here that I've heated up once and then it's been soaking, cooled and then soaking. I'm gonna heat it up one more time. You can see the color. It's got a reddish brown color to it. We may have coaxed some color. One more heat and then I'll put some fiber in. I might even just put the fiber in with the roots. Then we have the greens which have heated and then just steeped here and cooled off and I've just had them sitting honestly for like two days. <laughs> so maybe we'll get a light green, greenish yellow out of that. And then of course here is the dandelion flowers which is going to have a more yellow hue. I already strained those off 
and then it's time for fiber to go in. So I will strain off the greens and then put all three of these on the stove, put the fiber in. Let's see what we get. It's been a few days now since I've been out here and I'm back because I have dyed samples in the flowers, the leaves and the roots. And to be honest with you, they're all pretty much the same color. It's maybe slight variations, but they all have a sort of neutral beige color to them. I think that I either overheated or they spent too much time in my dye pot. So as any, you know, good natural dyer might do, I'm going to try again. I'm having visions maybe of stinging nettles. Don't want to get too obsessed with it. I was expecting or hoping for a more vibrant green yellow and vibrancy has not been what I've found at all. The colors to me seem quite dull actually. And so I'm going to collect a few more flower heads and that'll be fast and easy because I'm not going to be grabbing the roots this time as well as some leaves. I'm just going to fill up my foraging basket one more time. I'll do one more attempt and we'll compare across and then I can think a little bit about the things that I did and some ways in which you know you try and if things don't turn out quite the way you expect you can always try again. So that's what I'm going to do. Dandelions are in a abundance right now so I don't have to worry about foraging for them and I figured I've got time might as well try it we shall see what I get with this second round of foraging watch out for your friends don't want to disturb him I just took them out of their first round. I strained out those flowers and then I've added just another handful of flowers in here and put the textile back in. You can see it floating around in there. See if I can extract a tiny bit more color out of these fresher yellow again. I'm only gonna let this go for about an hour. I'm not gonna dye it for too long of a period of time. Let's see what happens. The other thing I didn't do with the leaves last time, because I had so many of them, I didn't cut them. So I'm going to cut these after I give them this rinse. And again, that's just good standard practice. I didn't do it though. Haha, -ha, see how easy it is to forget a step? As long as I'm making a second attempt with the leaves and flowers, I thought I will take the roots that have been soaking for days and days and heated and cooled and heated and start with fresh water and see, I don't know, maybe that pinkish color that could happen is somewhere deeper in the roots. I'll try again and see. You never know. Why not? Thank you, Dandelion, for bringing a beautiful and diverse palette of neutrals into my dye studio. Now, vibrant yellow greens? No, 
but really soft and subtle colors that range from yellow into maybe the slightest of pink in the root. So going into a natural dye session with expectations is maybe a dangerous game. And I should know that after all this time, <laughs> but it's still hard sometimes when you think you're gonna get one thing and you get something else. It's always that reminder that we have to celebrate and welcome what nature is willing to provide. Two things I wanna share with you or two thoughts I had with this activity. One was that soy milk as a binder it is a wonderful option. It's very accessible. However, it doesn't always do a wonderful job as compared to alum. And as you saw in today's video, the alum results were a bit more on par and really the soy milk binder on the cotton pieces, obviously not the protein. Protein is always going to do better in absorbing those natural colors, but the soy milk binder on the cotton really did very little to pull in color from a binding perspective. And so those results were very, very light. So just keep that in mind. The more I work with cellulose fibers and the variety of natural colors that I play with in my natural studio, I really do recognize how much stronger using an alum, an aluminum acetate or a tannin alum combo for cellulose fibers like cotton. Just something to keep in mind. I'll always throw some soy in there regardless. And it does work really well with certain natural dyes, but not all of them. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that. And speaking of a tannin and alum mordant, next week on Color Quest, I'm going to welcome in a new dye source in the form of an herb, and that is elderberry. Yes, an herb in a berry form. And I've been excited to try this out, but I've decided since I'm gonna be using cotton in next week's project, I'm also going to step you through the tannin alum combo for a mordant, since I'm hoping to give a little extra binder bond in that particular project. So I hope you'll join me as we welcome another herbal wonder into our natural color world. Have a great week and I will see you next Friday. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. How's it going? <laughs> oh, I don't have my mic. <laughs>